top freshmen within each of the founders' organizations. So Robin Beatty, Carrie Evans, Tammy Free, Emily Bionet, Anne Heckman, Carrie Miller, Ellen O'Connor, Lindsay Renke, Class this last season in their personal um, or in their PQB. And so we would love for all of you to join us in recognizing these top three, including our rookie of the season. In third place, participating today from New Berlin, Wisconsin, congratulations, Emily Guillemet. Please join me in congratulating our second place notable newcomer who's participating from New Bedford, Massachusetts, Carrie Evans. And now it's time to honor our rookie of the season who sold just over 73,000. Oh my goodness. Congratulations, Lindsay Rinsky. <laughs> and we arranged for Lindsay to join us via FaceTime. But before we go, <laughs> oh, we all just saw her. Let's take a quick look. At how Lindsay was able to accomplish this, this amazing, this amazing season um, by a video. Take a look. Oh my gosh. Okay, I gotta go. Yes, yes. I'm taping it. My name is Lindsay Ranke. I am born and raised from Louisville, Kentucky, and I live here with my husband, Nicholas, and my two boys, Liam and Gabriel. The little one, he's two, he just roams around all the time, but the older one, who's almost four, he gets mommy's doing something. Whenever the doorbell rings, he'll be like, oh, well, I guess that's the next customer coming over. They walk in and be like, oh, you're the next customer. I'm like, that's not what we should say. <laughs> he also will, uh, you know, help me set up my rack and, um, he knows, you, you guys all know this, how it flops on your head and you got to stay in the right way. So he knows, he's like, mommy, I've got this. You know, it's not going to hit you today. So uh, he's been a huge help to me too. Before Caddy, I was a, a registered nurse for about five years. And then I took some time off to stay home when I was pregnant with Gabe. I really loved helping people as a nurse. Like that was my favorite thing about it, but my passion for it was missing and I'm very passion driven. So um, I was looking for something that's when Caddy kind of came in and it was just something that I was instantly drawn to and embarking on this Caddy journey. I had 10 shows booked before the scoop. I went through my Facebook. I went through my phone, my contacts. I tried to think outside of the box and I sent my uh, launch letter out to everybody, the emails. I did know that I needed to get in front of people that I didn't know, meet new people, expand my circle, which means stepping out of my comfort zone. <laughs> My February, I already knew was going to be a little bit of a slower month because my husband was deploying overseas and I wanted to spend that two weeks in the middle of February with him and my family. So I had a couple things at the beginning of the month, a couple shows, and then a couple at the end. I ran into a big challenge with my preview show. I invited 50 women to my show, paper invitations, the whole kit and caboodle, the save the date, the cabby bite, um, and I had two people show up. One of them was my mom. <laughs> very, very discouraging. I wrote that one off. I did the rest of my February shows. The second hiccup came when four of my five shows that I had in March canceled within a week of each other. And that's where I kind of really started to take action. That involved me calling uh, first my team leader and uh, women on my team, some other stylists in the area, just kind of asking for some advice. I also uh, talked with my mom who um, is in marketing and her biggest advice to me was that I needed to make it fun. So that's when I started um, using themes for my open houses and I decided to make them monthly. I did a tapas and sangria and I re-invited the 48 that did not show from February. <laughs> <laughs> to that, one. 
that was a big turning point for me. When in love, a theme is one thing that I have really learned. I am in Louisville, Kentucky, so I continued that theme with uh, the Derby and, uh, you know, focused on some outfit combinations that you can make and wear at the track. And then I take signals from people. I can see the people that want to be left alone and do their thing and give in and out, and I appreciate that. That's fine. When I find a woman at the rack that is into it and her book is circled and her little checklist is marked and I'm like, okay, I see what's going on here. And I'm like, okay, you should probably just have a party if you like this much stuff. And just very nonchalantly and casually. And they'll always be like, yeah, that sounds great. Before, before they even go try anything on or before checkout. So they've already committed. By the time I get them to check out, they're even more excited because they've ordered the pieces they like. That's been a huge tool for me. I would also always talk in my presentations about wish lists and, you know, I would say, hey, you know, get the two or three things you can't live without today. And um, if you are on a budget, we can make a wish list for you. I can touch base with you next month or your next paycheck and we can get that delivered right to your doorstep. And I can help you pair those things back with things you already have. So I wanted to find a way to engage with clients throughout the entire season. I also really picked up my social media presence. I would post outfit of the day. People love an outfit of the day. They love to see the clothes that they have purchased and how they can style them and wear them. And also it's a way for them to see pieces they might not have seen or kind of ignored on the rack and then they end up buying it. So um, that has been a really great tool for me, but just, a little bit. just giving the tips rather than, you know, being salesy on social media. One of my favorite things is when I get a text on my phone and I get them all the time of women um, sending me a selfie in their mirror uh, with their outfit of the day. And they're like, look what I put together to give that feel good to somebody. That's, that's just, that's awesome. I think if there's one thing that people could take away is just to not let discouragement win. Um, that's what it wants to do. When I look back at this past season and all of the circumstances were against me in February, when all those shows in March canceled, had I not took action, I would not be sitting here. It really is nice and refreshing to get out of bed and just be like, okay, look what I get to do today. Um, not like, oh, I have to go to work today. It's been really fun kind of doing life with all these women. You can just see how the relationships just pour out from all over. And I really enjoy it. I love the connections. And yeah, I just, i can't wait to see where it goes. Did you ever expect your wife to become a fashion stylist? Uh, no, not really. And not, not like anything against her. It's just, she was always into kind of helping people. And I think she really thrived in the nursing field in that regard. So I think she really just found a new avenue for helping people. I am absolutely very proud.